building the ultimate virtual box lab this is going to be video number two in our video series here um, this is going to be installing pfSense to act as our environment's router and um, so let's just get started let's uh, go ahead and open up virtual box here we are going to create a new virtual machine and let's just call it what it is pfSense we're going to switch it over to Linux version I'm just gonna do other Linux remember I do have the download links posted on the blog post for this video series in the intro video so we're gonna leave the uh, recommended size here at 256 megabytes we don't really need a lot there we're gonna leave the default here we want to create the virtual hard drive now we're gonna leave the default VDI because we are working with VirtualBox and uh, we want to dynamically allocate it and um, then we are going to tell it where to install now if you followed the previous video where we configure VirtualBox this should not need to be changed the location of where you're going to store this virtual machines VDI um, it is on my S drive and um, in its own little VM storage folder so I'll just go ahead and exit out of that let's go ahead and leave the the recommended 8 gigs that should be plenty actually and uh, go ahead and hit create so now let's go into settings there's just a few things we want to do here to kind of slim it down, make sure that you know it, it, we're not using too many resources or whatnot. Um, first thing is going to be let's let's just go down the list here. Do we need to do anything here? Nope, we're good. No, no description. Now in system, I'm going to uncheck floppy and I'm going to uncheck uh, this enable absolute pointing device. And then while I'm here, I'm going to go down to USB and uncheck the enable USB controller. I don't need a USB controller in there. So we'll go back up to system. Uh, let's see, processor. We only need one. That's fine. We don't care about any of that at the moment. Display. I'm not going to make any changes here. Now storage. What I want to do is on this VDI, I want to click this solid state drive because it is, it is installed on a solid state drive. Now, I don't think PFSense does anything special uh, when it sees an SSD drive. I could be wrong, but I know Windows would. So... In our future videos, when we're installing Windows Server 2012 and Windows 8, we're going to go ahead and make sure we select that. So that way, that operating system knows that it's on a solid-state drive and it doesn't sit there trying to defrag and all that good stuff. So uh, While we're in the storage area, let's go ahead and attach our ISO. So if we go in here and we browse to our PFSense. I can just click that, but let's just find it. It's on my S drive in the ISO storage folder. Uh, let's go ahead and select that. Click Open and let's keep going down audio we don't need no stinking audio right so we're going to take that off okay in our network section what we're going to do here is we want two adapters adapter one is already enabled by default it's attached to NAT we want to switch NAT over to bridge because we want this adapter to be the PFSense's WAN connection uh, essentially it's going to be the one connected to my home network here uh, that has access to the my home router and whatnot so now there's one little thing here now, depending on what type of computer, what kind of network adapter your computer has, you may have to make this change here, the adapter type. Now, in, a, in my previous, like in an older video series I did, I didn't have to change anything here. But with my newer computer, the one that we're actually working on now, I need to switch this from PCNet Fast 3 to uh, Intel Pro 1000 desktop. Otherwise, it's not going to work. So you may have to do that if you have some weird problems trying to get the NICs set up during the install in PFSense. Uh, try switching this over. Now... I'll go ahead and go to adapter 2. We want to enable that, and we want to switch this over to internal network. And so all our virtual machines from here on out are going to just be have one adapter, and it's going to be internal network, except for our PFSense, it's going to have two adapters, okay? Now, same thing here. We need to go down here to adapter type, switch it over to the Intel Pro 1000 MT desktop. All right, I'm going to leave them both connected. Uh, there's During the install, we may need to disconnect them and then reconnect them again but um, we'll see how that goes all right so we'll keep going down serial ports not enabled we don't care about that usb of course is not enabled anymore and i don't need to set up any shared so that's basically it it's pretty slimmed down we got the essentials configured let's go ahead and start it up okay so our default is going to uh, do option number one here so I'll, well, I'll just go ahead and hit it 
Now you got to watch out for this because during the the boot up here on this ISO, we need to we need to hit the letter I to install it. So I'm going to go ahead and hit I. Uh, we'll go ahead and just accept the default. Or actually, let's go back. Um, let's do accept the accept these settings. Quick, easy install. I like that. Well, automatically, yeah, yep. Just install stuff, please. Uh, just standard kernels, fine. Uh, this machine is about to be shut down. Now in VirtualBox, it's kind of, it's kind of funky. You you may get some weird errors. You may have to force it to turn off and then remove the CD. But we're gonna go ahead and try to reboot it now. Uh, let's see what happens. I may have to pause it or something, but we'll see what happens here. Otherwise, it's gonna boot back up to that ISO. If I can get it in time. Let's see here. Once it shuts down, I'm gonna try to. Rebooting. Okay, boom, boom. And remove. Did I get it? Can't load kernel. Uh, I think maybe let's try restarting that again. Machine. Reset. I think it may have been trying to boot up off that CD at the same time. Yep, so we should be good now. Just going to boot up on, on its own here. Okay, do you want to set up VLANs now? I'm not setting up any VLANs, so I'm going to hit no. Enter WAN interface or A for auto detection. Now, if you want to do an auto detection, this is where you have to go back into vir VirtualBox here, go into settings, and you can do this while it's running. You can go into settings, you can go into network, uh, on adapter one, you could uncheck this, hit OK, come back over here, and then do A and all that good stuff. But what I'm going to do is, um, you can see up here, EM0, uh, and it shows the MAC address and EM1. These are, are what we're going to work with now. So I'm just going to do enter the WAN interface name. So I want EM0, which was my first one. I'm going to, I'm going to do, I'm just going to type EM0 and enter. All right. So enter LAN interface name or A. So for the LAN, I'm going to do EM1. Enter. And optional, that's if you're going to have like a, a DMZ or something or or another VLAN or something, we're just going to hit enter. All right, so the interface will be assigned as follows. WAN is EM0 and LAN is, yep, looks right. Um, let's see, do you want to set up VLANs first? No, I don't want to set up no stinking VLANs. Oh, I accidentally didn't save it. I think I just hit enter. So I'm just going to do it again, EM0 and uh, EM1. Okay, nothing if finished. Do you want to proceed? Yes. Okay, so now what you can see happen here is this. Our WAN interface, which is EM0, successfully got an IP address from my home router's DHCP server. Um, it handed out 10.2.0.199. Actually, I wonder if it must be holding on to that from a previous video uh, because that's what I actually set for it to be statically uh, assigned before. But we'll go ahead and assign it a static address because I really don't want it to change because if I want to be able to access that from... For whatever reason, that WAN port, I, I want I want it to be that same number. Now the LAN port, 192.168.1.1, I'll probably leave that, but we're gonna we're gonna just set it like just that way you can set it however you like, anyways. So to assign uh to set interfaces IP address, we're gonna hit number two, enter into the number of the interface you wish to configure. We want the WAN, so it's gonna be one. Configure WAN interface via DHCP. Nope. Enter the new WAN IP address. This is gonna be same thing basically it's going to be 10.2.0.199 you can make it whatever but it has to be in the same ip scheme as your home internet or your home network's ip scheme okay uh so 199 is just something easy for me to remember so i hit enter all right the subnet bit count is going to be uh class c which is 24 so i hit 24 do you want to revert to http as web I'm just going to hit no because I really don't know what that is. Okay. So now, if we wanted to, we can try to access that uh, from a web browser. Uh, I just don't know if it's blocked or anything because it is the WAN port. So I'm just going to hit enter to continue. Now we want to set the LAN address. Uh, so we're going to do set interfaces IP address. Two. All right. We want to do two and the new IP address. 
I like the 192, 168. Dot one dot one, and it, you know what? I probably don't need to do this because it looks like it's already set statically, anyways. But why not? I want to do it anyways. Twenty four for the subnet. Do you want to enable DHCP? Nope. Because I will be setting up a DHCP server. Do I want do you want to revert to HTTP as the web? I'm just gonna hit no, and we'll figure out what to do later. <laughs> All right, press enter. Okay, so we should be able to, if we had a virtual like a Windows seven or Windows eight or 2012 server virtual machine we should be able to go to this web address and access it the next video we're going to be setting up uh, probably I, I'm going to say the Windows Server 2012 um, OS and then from there we'll go ahead and access this PFSense's um, configuration and we'll do a couple little final things to get everything working right so that's basically it to set up PFSense in VirtualBox um, besides the fact that once we get the server 2012 up and running, we have to web into PFSense just to do a couple real minor things really quick. Other than that, it's, it's pretty much good to go. So thanks for watching, guys, and look forward to the next video.